We're watching a powerful mid-latitude cyclone off the west coast, and then another strong upper-level low that's bringing some of the first snows of the season across areas like Chicago into Ohio, and the Appalachians are just going to get crushed with very heavy snow. That'll eventually swing into Pennsylvania and into New York. So if we take a look at the big picture this morning, you can see this massive swirl that's just been highlighted across the West Coast. We've had numerous power outages. In fact, yesterday there were up to 600,000 customers in and around Washington without power. And that's just dumping torrential rains along the coast. And that low pressure dropped to an all time low for a mid latitude cyclone off the Pacific Northwest all the way down to a 942 millibar. That was literally equivalent of a major hurricane hanging off the west coast and they did in fact find a wind gust of 102 miles an hour off a buoy off vancouver island now later on this afternoon that's just going to dump extremely heavy rain into northern california and mudslides and landslides are going to be a huge concern and then off the east we have another strong upper level low that's highlighted across areas of into detroit this morning that's going to be diving southeastward throughout the afternoon and eventually lift northeast and it's going to be bringing some snow along its wake in some areas could see some heavier snows and start to pile up especially across the appalachian so if we take a look at the overall hazard map this morning you can see the flood watches happening across uh in areas of Northern California where they are ex expecting some very torrential rain. You've got snow in the higher elevations in Mount Shasta that's just gonna be you know, counting those snows in, in defeat. And then there we had the blizzard warnings yesterday highlighted across North Dakota. That's swinging into Milwaukee this morning with some snow. You got the winter weather advisories highlighted across sh Chicago. And then that, as the upper level low dives southeastward into Indiana, places into Ohio, back into eastern areas of Kentucky, and then it swings northeast into the Appalachians where they do have some winter storm warnings taking effect. And then that eventually gets into Pennsylvania. And then, yes, we've got a bullseye here right there in the... Uh, into Pennsylvania and into New York, where they could actually see eight to 10 inches of snow. So this is, could be some pretty significant totals in some of these areas, but it's chilly across a good part of the country this morning. Some areas, especially across the South is with clear skies, light winds, and just perfect radiational cooling has dropped to their lowest temperatures so far they've seen this fall. And yeah, you know, it's cold when it's basically colder in texas than it is in caribou maine right <laughs> yeah that's the benefit of that cooler drier air that's surfing surfacing across the middle part of the country and out west we'll be highlighting that high risk folks so as the as this system as this powerful mid-latitude cyclone gets a little bit closer and swings and wraps around its moisture it picks it up off the pacific and just going to be dumping it inland so very concerning with a moderate to a to high risk for excessive flooding across this region from Crescent City to Mount Shasta, where they're going to be getting all snow back into Redding, but places like into Eureka and to Mendo Mendocino. Yes, very concerning of extremely heavy rain. You could be even looking at some totals of 8, 10, possibly even some double digit totals into this region as before it's all said and done and then i think eventually that's going to swing a little bit further south into central california but for today there's the 976 so it has come up uh pretty substantially considering where it was yesterday but yes as it could gets a little bit closer to shore it's going to be bringing those intense rain bands in inland into now places like in the northern california and i'll eventually just start creeping a little bit further south eventually getting into central california but here's the strong upper level low across the ohio valley into the great lakes it's right now into places like wisconsin bringing some snow into illinois back into indiana into ohio and eventually, as it continues to lift, it's going to be springing more snow across the mid-Atlantic and into the northeast, especially New England. But some, going to be bringing some high winds along with it as well. So, yes, 
unfortunately, most of the intense winds will remain offshore, but definitely close enough to still produce some hurricane force wind gust inland, especially along the coast into Washington and Oregon and those areas into Northern California, even creeping into portions of Nevada. And then the strong upper level low that's coming out of uh, the Dakotas yesterday with those blizzard warnings in North Dakota now will bring the high winds across the Ohio Valley, especially in the Appalachians. So anywhere you see in the orange here, that's at least 40 miles per hour, if not 50, even pushing somewhere's 55 miles an hour as the swings southeast and eventually swings northeast over the next two days. But overall, here's your precipitation totals over the next two days. Yes, very concerning with some of those purples showing up on the map. Yeah, that could be some double digits totals, unfortunately, for Northern California and then further points northwest into especially those coastal regions. But then there's the strong upper level low that's draped across Wisconsin this morning dives southeast and eventually swings and slingshots. So this is beneficial rain for many areas that they've been in a desperate drought and some of these could be picking up some two to three inch totals before it's all said and done where it's not snowing and then where it's cold enough to snow, they're gonna be picking up some decent totals as well. So a dusting to a couple of inches across you know, Illinois, Ohio, places like in Detroit. But yes, definitely as you get into the Appalachians, we could be talking some even up to some double digit totals. And there's another, you know, highlighted area officially from the National Weather Service. Yes, we could be looking at some 18 to even some 24 inch totals before it's all said and done, but then some higher amounts where they have a lot more, you know, water content to be able to work with up here to places like into Scranton, those areas in Southern portions of New York. Yeah, you could be picking up some pretty decent totals as well. So maybe some eight, 10, even some isolated 12 inch amounts uh, reported before it's all said and done through Saturday night. But as we extend into Sunday, then we look at the jet stream because there's a zonal flow returns. So we've seen this so many times before as the jet stream more or less turns flat. It just brings that warm air coming off the Pacific and that's going to flatten out the jet stream. So that's going to definitely heat up the atmosphere, especially when it's combined with the south southwest wind. So as you're getting you know, chilly this morning across a good part of the middle part of the country. It's going to be completely the opposite by the time we Sunday rolls around. It's very warm temperatures combined with those zonal flow aloft and the south southwest winds. That's going to crank those temperatures in the heat of the afternoon. And you're definitely going to be seeing the 80s return further south in places like into Texas and those 70s swing into Oklahoma and to Arkansas, 60s back into Missouri. So yes, plenty warm air as we get into Sunday. But as you look further north, there's the more significant changes that are likely going to be on the table that are likely building as we head into Thanksgiving and then drastic changes as we head into after Thanksgiving. So we're going to break down those details as well. So, but as we head into Monday, I think the system that's off the West Coast will finally be further south. So yes, we're talking those areas into Central California will be getting some beneficial rains as, as it starts to wind itself down. You can see the freezing line still well north, but it is trying to creep a little bit further south as we head into Monday. But overall, let's take you back. This is the November outlook, right? So we know it's been plenty warm across the central and eastern two thirds of the United States. And that's exactly what the forecast called for at the beginning of the month when it back in a Halloween time frame. So yes, it's been predominantly warm for the central and eastern two thirds, especially with the dominant southeast ridge and well above average temperature anomalies across the east. The only cooler name in town was they're going to be across the western regions. And if you look exactly what has unfolded so far with only 10 days left in the month of November, that's pretty spot on, folks. Yeah, Southeast Ridge has been alive and well. We've got 10, 15 degrees above average for the last three weeks. Yeah, plenty warm conditions across the central and eastern two thirds. The only cooler anomalies in town have been across the west where the app where the forecast was called for so 
in the week ahead, we are seeing a little bit of a rebound. So those areas that are, have seen some of those cooler anomalies for the last three weeks are going to be warming up um, for those areas across the west and, and into the southwest. But all eyes will be turning further north into British Columbia, especially with blocking looking to take place over Greenland into Alaska. That's going to set the stage for more significant changes as we head into after Thanksgiving. Because let's take a look at the teleconnections. Yes, this is something we're starting to put the pieces of the puzzle together after Thanksgiving when your WPO, your Western Pacific Oscillation, turns predominantly negative as we get past your Thanksgiving and it stays negative through the first week of December, that's a colder push of air that's coming across from west to east and that's combined with your EPO, your Eastern Pacific Oscillation. So when those two teleconnections are talking to each other and they're both negative, <laughs> significantly negative, that's a colder push, in air, push of air into the lower 48. And what that does is that sets up blocking over the top. So this is a pattern that we haven't seen yet this season, and that's gonna be a cold pattern. So this is completely the opposite of what we've been experiencing so far this fall. But as we transition to after Thanksgiving and getting into that meteorologically winter for December, yes, we've got blocking over the top. Look at the ridge looking to build over Alaska. We've got ridging building over Greenland. That's the perfect recipe. As you can see, the jet stream drastically dips and brings that cooler air, that colder air into the lower 48 for an extended period of time. So this is a, if you're a cold weather fans, this is what you, this is what you want to see in the transition likely starts to unfold as we head into actually your Thanksgiving day. So you're just like what we've seen, the, 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 the south and the southeast ridge try to keep that ridge alive and well, but it's going to be fighting the colder push of air further to the north. So that's going to be your transitional day as you're definitely starting to cool down again across the northeast and we're going to be starting to see the uh, the transition of much colder air coming in from the north as we head into your actual Thanksgiving day. And I think this will come in waves again as we head into that first couple of days of December. Again, this is your, your southeast ridge is going to be fighting this. It's going to be fighting it every step of the way. But I think eventually this colder air will win. And that's going to be setting the stage for a much colder look as we head into after Thanksgiving, as the pieces of the puzzle are starting to come together. So if you if you take a look at the breakdown from what we are looking at for the next seven days compared to the seven days after Thanksgiving into your first week of December, yeah, it's going to look completely different with that Arctic air plunging down with the ridging starting to build over Alaska and the ridging starting to build over Greenland. That just pulls the cooler air underneath and it traps it for an extended period of time. So this is a nice transition for your cold weather fans and this will likely be a snowy setup as well as we get into that first week of December. So for guys that have been looking for some definitely some colder temperatures, I think that's finally going to be on the cards as we head after Thanksgiving getting into that first week of December. So guys, I appreciate you guys out watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update. Wire protect you before and after the storm.